So an alert walks into a bar, sits down, says to the bartender, you're out of beer. The bartender says, that's great, thanks. I know I'm out of beer. I ran out of beer 15 minutes ago. You could have told me when I was low on beer. If you told me a week ago I was low on beer, I could have ordered more beer. I wouldn't have run out of beer. You're no help. You're dismissed. So the alert gets up, leaves the bar. Next thing happens, a huge crowd of alerts come into the bar, stand in a big long line going out the door down the street. First alert in the line steps up to the bar, sits down, says to the bartender, you're low on beer. <laughs> that's my alerts joke. Sorry, right. that's about the best I could do. It's an alert joke. Actually, I felt like I should tell you a joke as sort of a thank you for coming to this talk. You know, um, and a thank you for coming to uh, Future Stack. You know, all of us here, all of us here at Future Stack, we came here. We all have something in common. We all came here for a purpose. That purpose wasn't to just eat the great food, drink the Bloody Marys, get the cool badges. Our purpose was to see cake. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. So I feel like I should be especially thankful that you guys are coming to this talk because for that matter, you know, a lot of you, I'm sure at least half the audience are probably like DevOps. You all have apps in production that are running right now that you care about, customers using those apps, things that you have to keep up, mission critical. You should be sitting in front of a terminal somewhere making sure, you know, your app's not having problems. But you're here. You're hearing my talk, and I appreciate that. The truth is, you know, you're here sitting, listening to me, rapt attention, cell phones off, right? Cell phones off, yeah? Yeah, who are we kidding? Your cell phones aren't off. Your cell phones can't be off. If something happens, you're going to get an alert, right? Now your cell phones are on. But the point is, you're always monitoring your application. And an alerting system is a key element of any monitoring system. And I'm here to talk to you today about New Relic's alerting system. That's me, uh, Bill Kaiser. I was actually a picture of me when I worked on a tall ship years ago. Uh, but lately, I've been working at New Relic, building a lot of different things, and I've had a great interest in the alerting system. I implemented a lot of the early versions of alerting. And today, I'm going to talk to you about the latest update we've made to alerting. You've already heard some of the uh, information from uh, some of the other talks. But I'm going to go into a lot more detail and tell you what we did. I'm super excited about what we did, both because um, you know, I've been heavily involved in it, and I've been talking to users and finding out what, what they are interested in, what you're interested in, but also because I use alerts. We use alerts in New Relic, and, and we're really fired up about the new capabilities. It's made things a lot easier for us. So when we set out to think about what could we do in our next big update for alerts, we stopped and we thought about, well, what is it that you expect from an alerting system? And we thought the first thing is you need to get just the right people involved at the appropriate time. It's a key element of alerting. Another one is you just want really high fidelity in your alerts. You want to have information delivered immediately that's consistently relevant and actionable. That's critical. But you also want flexibility. You need to empower the user to get them to set out and tell you exactly the things that they're aren't interested in, the things that you're that, that are important to you and to tell you exactly what you want to happen, when you want it to happen, without having to have a degree in control systems. We always talked about that we didn't want a system with just tons of knobs that was really hard to use. We wanted to let you decide what you care about. So, you know, this is where we started. We've got a great app, New Relic, that lets you monitor lots of different things. You monitor web applications, uh, key transactions, monitor services, uh, mobile applications, um, you know, all sorts of things that you can monitor, you can also alert on. You can define conditions on all of those different things. You can tell us when you want to hear when something's gone bad, when a threshold's been crossed for applications, key transactions, all of these things. And you tell us what it is you want done. You tell us, you know, whether it's um, you know, email, having uh, different notifications sent, or you've got your sort of custom back end that you need to have something done with. You've got web hooks that you can use to tell us what you want done with those. And of course, mobile alerts 
are pretty essential. All of these things now we call notification channels. And we also give you sort of a place to look at the alerts. We give you a home page to go to kind of find out what's been going on, what's happened. This is all stuff that's in New Relic right now. The thing is, one of the big issues we have right now is that a lot of these things, as the alerting system has evolved, and, the, and there's no finish line for this. We're always trying to improve this, and we're always trying to get the feedback and make improvements. But as, we've, as it's evolved, things have gotten kind of spread over the app. And there's lots of different places where you go to set up some of these configuration settings, uh, notifications, and it's gotten kind of jumbled. And we all felt that ourselves as users. And I'm sure a lot of you have felt that too. I bet there's a lot of people in here who are already familiar with what New Relic offers with alerting. So I'd be curious, just show of hands of people who know what I'm talking about when I say the configuration. See, yeah, there's a lot of hands there. And, you know, it's, it makes me cringe, but it's true. But I think that we've made some major steps in addressing this. And when we went back and we sort of rethought, we, we thought about the whole process, the whole workflow and what it is that we needed to support and how people think about these thresholds and uh, the, the configuration and alerts. And we, we started with this idea of, of alert policies. Like I said, I think you've probably heard some of this now. And basically, this idea that there's one place you go to to basically specify what you want to watch and one action to take. It's not spread out. There's one page, the alerts page, that has all of the alert policies listed for everything. So it's one place to go. And it kind of brought everything together these alert policies themselves, <coughs> excuse me, um, incidentally, you, you, may be, you may think I'm losing my voice because of the concert last night and yelling, but I assure you I talk like this and cough all the time. It's just, this is my normal voice, I promise. So the um, alert policies, basically we have policies which <laughs> let you um, configure settings for applications, key transactions, and servers. It's not in the current release, but we're also working on bringing alert policies to mobile configuration, mobile alerting, as well as the, um, the plugins. But right now, it's applications, key transactions, and servers. Policies look like this. This is an example of a server policy. You can specify the thresholds. You can see the, special, the thresholds in the middle. There's the notification settings to tell us what you want to do when these alerts trigger. And then there's a section that basically says what servers this policy applies to, what, what systems, what applications, or whatever. It's all in one place. The application alert policies you specify the um, app decks and error rates. Similar with servers, you have like system settings, the same system settings you're probably already familiar with, the things you care about. And you have key transactions, um, app decks, and error rate. And then you have these policies, and you can edit them. And it basically looks like this. This is a server alert policy. It may be kind of hard to see. The area that I'm circling there is actually a new setting that we have for servers, um, a, a, a setting to tell you, tell you when your server is down, server downtime um, switch. And that was one of the most widely requested features we had for server alerts. And then um, another thing we added was these lag time values and thresholds. You could, previously, you'd specify the threshold value, but now we can actually say you have more control over, well, how long does it have to be in that triggered state before you're going to trigger the alert? And that turns out to be a really useful um, control for um, avoiding you know, excessive notifications or noisy alerts. As you make that lag time longer, you sacrifice a little bit in latency, but you gain with less noise. It's, it's going to be, you're, you're going to generate fewer alerts. Or for that matter, you shorten that lag time and you get a more immediate notification when you're sure that that's something that you care about. On the policy screen themselves, you have these, so you have these named policies um, for, that you set up and define with custom thresholds. And then you also have a, a default policy. The default policy is basically where you have all your settings for things that don't, for servers or systems that don't have a, an actual policy assigned to them yet. The default policies will actually tell you um, what systems they're applied that are they're currently up, um, mapped to or currently in effect for because there's no named policies. You have, of course, the default settings for that. You also have a 
place where you actually, within the editing of the policy itself, where you specify what are the systems that are mapped to it, you know, what, how you assign that policy to particular servers so you can have like your production servers policy and then select all of your production servers and just in one spot without having to and go back and reapply the settings everywhere. It's very important. We've also got a new notion for um, notifications. We came up with this idea of um, channels. So channels are this idea basically you take all the different ways that you want to be notified and you can set those up ind independent of the actual policies under uh, channels setting tab in the alerts section. So it's the same notification endpoints we already support but now we actually support being able to define multiple instances of them and that's something that's actually really helpful if you've ever run into this where you don't want to just define one email for your whole account to send alerts to but you want to have different distribution lists, you want different pager duty policies or different hip chat rooms. You can assign multiple of them, set them up as many as you want, and then name them, and then come back later and assign them. Also within the settings of the these notification channels, you can actually flag them to indicate that a particular channel is only going to be used for downtime, only for the really serious stuff. You want that to be something like, you know, um, a pager duty um, uh, a policy that's going to wake somebody up in the middle of the night, but you really only want to do it for downtime. We also have an idea of notification groups. Notification groups are basically where you take a bunch of different notification channels and put them together. It's, it's, you know, a lot of times you might set up like an email and uh, uh, um, a couple of other channels, a hip chat room. You might want to just, if something bad happens, you might want to send it to a uh, <coughs> uh, page your duty to have it go to the on-call ops person, but you might also want to just send an email out to the dev team or something too. You set that up as a common group and then you can reapply those group settings um, to other policies. So your policy now is this place, this one place where you have, you know, your, your notification groups, your notification channels all set up in the same place. You've got that setting to basically say, um, <coughs> you know, for downtime alerts and then you've also got your actual individual settings there so when you're going there as a user and you're looking at the new policy it's going to tell you and by the way here's how the policy affects you personally it's going to send you a mobile alert and it's going to send you um, it's also going to send you your email independent of the uh, notification channels that you have so let's take a little closer look at the alerts um, then the application, just to step back a little bit, we have lots of places in the application where we show this sort of uh, list of events on the right side of the page. That event list contains a lot of things that are happening in time, recent time windows that are relevant for that page. So um, the alerts first sort of come into play here. You have uh, these events that occur called problems. And problems are basically the things that are triggered by a particular threshold. So you've got some app dex threshold, and when that crosses, it creates a single problem event. Context is just for that problem, for that application or key transaction. There's a critical problem, which means we feel like this is something that you need to be told of right away. It's going to send out notifications. And then there's also a caution problem, which is going to be something that uh, is not going to result in an actual notification being sent out, but it's going to be just sort of noted for um, informationally um, and attached to any alert if one happened to, to, does happen to go out. So, you know, I'm talking about alert and problems, and so there's this kind of issue. Well, what is an alert if you've also got these problems? So the key idea of an alert is that an alert is basically, it's like an incident. A lot of people refer to it as an incident. It's a collection of these different problems, these different conditions that are going on that are all related, that are all under the same policy. So you don't want to just send out an email for every little thing that starts triggering. You might have a, a server that starts, triggers a threshold for high CPU, and then that server goes down, and then two more servers trigger for high CPU, and you don't want all of these emails going out. You just, you start by creating the incident, and as these new things happen, you add that information to the incident and give one people, give people one place one landing page to go and find that information. 
So alerts are basically an aggregation of critical and caution problems and other interesting events. Alerts will show up in that event list under a mail icon right next to the critical problems and caution problems that they may comprise. The alert landing page shows you the actual problems that are part of that incident, part of that alert. And it'll list them out there along with any relevant graphs for those problems, the general status of the incident, whether it's closed or whether it's still open, and then a history showing you over time as things got added or removed from that alert and who got notified and what notifications went sent out. So you'll see everything that um, specifically happened in the context of that alert. And of course, your emails will go out for those notifications and they'll have a link back to that alert page as the landing page. So the, in the notifications, everybody kind of comes to that one place where they see all the information about their alerts. And then there's your closed alert. An alert, only, uh, an alert is closed when there is, or then there are no more critical problems that are open. Um, an alert, conversely, is open when there is at least one critical problem that just triggered as well. And there's only ever one open alert for any given named policy. Any new problems that occur just get added into that open alert. So we also have a page where you can see the history of alerts that were created and you can kind of see what happens to them. So I'm going to shift gears for a second here after taking a sip of water and talk about some tips, things I think you'll find helpful if you're using new Relic Alerting and also if you, when you start using the new policies that might help you um, take it better advantage of them. So I don't know if anybody saw this headline. But um, this is related to my first tip. If you're ever in the emergency room waiting room with a five-year-old, turns out it's a good idea to turn the volume down on their gaming console. The uh, emergency rooms apparently have lots of noises going off all the time, and they don't, aren't too happy about hearing a lot of different beeps and spare noises. But they're talking about alarm fatigue, and it's a general problem with alerts. Um, you want to reduce the noise. You want to have this high fidelity, and you want to ensure that when you do deliver an information, you do wake somebody up in the middle of the night, that it is meaningful. So one of the main ways you can do that is by looking at those lag time settings and adjusting them. We already talked about that a little bit, but now you have a lot more control to be able to suppress those uh, spurious alerts by changing your lag time settings. Those are going to be very helpful. Another thing you can do is um, set, change the setting for the downtime. There's a similar kind of a, a lag time for downtimes where you say don't trigger the downtime unless I know that this site has I've not had a correct response from it for so many minutes. You know, you can also improve threshold sensitivity and improve the quality of the reports for downtime alerts by just adding in one setting, and that's a search screen search string for availability monitoring. So adding in a string that you expect to find in a good page is, might represent the difference between a page that's representing things that returns a normal um, correct page with a 200 status and a page that returns a 200 status with an error on it. So the search string is very useful. Another thing I'd encourage is take advantage of the app deck setting. Try to understand a little bit more about if you're not using app decks or you don't understand it, learn a little bit more about it. Pay attention to your app decks T configuration. I'm not going to go into app decks T right now. But suffice it to say that it's a very effective thing to alert on. Um, this graph actually shows you a plot of the app deck score for this is for some real data that we went through. And it's also that green line is the average response time. And you can see there's a spike in the average response time, but not really much of a or any drop in the app dex value. It's because the app dex score is basically a calculation that we do that gives you, it's more of an estimate of kind of the user experience. It's more closely aligned to what your users are experiencing with the page response times. Whereas the average response time is very skewed by outliers and pathological cases, things that are happening 
you know, on the right side of your response time distribution. And in this case, there was an issue that was hap happening on the servers that was causing a lot of pages to get hung up. But um, relative to the total throughput, it, weren't, it wasn't that many pages, and there were pages that were already probably failing uh, the, for the user's point of view. So if you were alerting on the average response time here, you might wake somebody up in the middle of the night with this problem when the truth is it's probably nothing that customers or that's impacting customers, and it's not, it's something that's um, probably not worth waiting, waking somebody up for. Here I've set the uh, T value to the average response time. That's a good rule of thumb for getting a good high fidelity app deck score. You know, don't just change your T value to something to make it sound like your app deck score is 98, 99 percent, because that's just that's going to be harder to get good alert thresholds on that. Another thing to do that's really useful is you set your set up your configure your alerts for an application, but you probably have like one or two pages that are particularly important to you. There might be the critical business pages, or they might be pages that have um, more stringent requirements for response time. So you call out those particular web transactions by creating a key transaction for them. Then not only are you tracking them separately for monitoring, but you can also set the alert thresholds particularly for those key transactions. You can set particular thresholds and you can also actually specify a custom AppDex T value to define what's, toler what's a tolerable response time for this particular page. Another thing that's helpful to get improved fidelity from your alerting is to, to identify those web transactions that are actually that are not user visible, that the users don't care about, like monitoring URLs, things sometimes get have a high throughput on them and they can skew your overall um, numbers by like bringing the averages down and bringing the, um, the error rate down and other things. So you basically just want to ignore that. And each of the, each of the agents have uh, their own API for designating transactions that we want to ignore. And then sometimes you get that call in the middle of the night and it's a critical problem, but you're not the guy they should be calling. It should be somebody else. So what we recommend for that is take full advantage of the pager duty integration. It's a great system for setting up um, uh, uh, policies, on-call schedules, <coughs> and escalation uh, policies. It's got everything, all the bells and whistles you could want to set up kind of how issues get routed. Take advantage of that. Something else that's new for the new alerts is actually um, some new APIs that we have. This is actually a screenshot from our API Explorer. It's a new feature that um, we've introduced to the application that lets you have this interactive documentation and uh, um, uh, exploratory interface for understanding how our, our APIs work and what they do. And, and as part of our public APIs. Now we have some new APIs around alert policies and notification channels. So you could actually um, programmatically list out with JSON or XML your, your current alert configuration as well as make updates to the alert policies across a large number of servers. Um, the Explorer is really cool. You can, you know, enter in certain parameters and it'll give you a little preview of the curl command that would be equivalent to that and let you actually run it right there or even it'll run it for you and kind of show you the actual results. So API Explorer is very cool. You can talk to one of us afterwards and we can give you a little more detail on how to find that if you're interested. That pretty much covers the uh, alerts and um, the, the updates and improvements that we've made. Um, you know, we, we've been through a lot of things, and this is really based on uh, talking to customers, getting a lot of feedback from people, talking to you guys, and, and hearing a lot of the feedback. And it's, you know, like I said, there's no finish line. We'll continue to make improvements. We'll continue to, to um, uh, 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 evolve it and try to address and fill in places where there's needs. You know, we feel like we've taken a good sort of perspective of kind of understanding your expectations and trying to meet those expectations with these new features. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, the, 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 the real key, I think the real um, 
uh, North Star and all of this is just to give something that's simple and accessible. Just give you, you know, really focus on uh, empowering you with the things that you really need a lot instead of just trying to throw everything at you and, and sorting it out. And to the extent that that's what the current interface did, I think we're moving in that really well in that direction. Um, so I would just actually like to take, uh, take a minute to introduce the people who, who made all of this happen. If you wouldn't mind, the alerts team, would you guys stand up? That's uh, Nate, Darren, um, uh, Roger, Beth. Yeah, that's right. Give them a hand. They did a great job. Um, you know, and uh, take a look at them. Feel free to grab any of us in the hall and tell us what you think. Tell us, you know, if there's other things that you, you know, you still wanted to see from us because this is how it happens. So I mentioned we've got the new alert policies UI. Um, if you've got an account right now, you probably haven't noticed anything changes. The, the, the new um, alert policies take effect for all new accounts. We'll be migrating existing accounts over the next... Uh, four to six weeks over time, and you'll get an email about that. So, oh, that tells me, my uh, that alert tells me my time is done. Uh, I want to thank you very much. I'm Bill Kaiser, and you can turn your cell phones on back now.